Your eight minute question and answer period will now begin. How are your projects funded? For sure, so our projects are funded in a couple different ways. Every project that we design is designed to create revenue and be able to support, to support itself. Uh, with that being said though, we do operate a lot off of grant funding as well. So that's through Enactus Canada, through different government grants, as well as through funding from our school. We kind of have a mix of all of that uh, to support our projects. Can you please explain what tools your team uses to measure impact? So while developing our systems, we benchmark our system with the plastic industry standard and consult with subject matter experts in the environmental and waste management industry. And then we iterated and redesigned our machines three times to ensure that they were operating as efficiently as possible. Uh, and then once the machines were ready, we made impact a focal point from the start um, by launching a pilot project here in Ottawa. Um, and then the tools we use to measure this impact include a spreadsheet system, which we now share with our operators so that they have the same effective impact tracking. And then we calculate our CO2, oil, and water save ratios from external environmental equipment audits that are just used throughout the plastic industry, and then factor in our own environmental outputs as well to ensure that these numbers are accurate. And this is a similar process that we use across all of our projects on the team. What is an example of a hurdle you faced because of COVID-19 and how did you overcome it? For sure, so our team faced a lot of hurdles uh, through COVID-19. Um, I'll speak to Poly specifically here. So as a hardware company with Poly, we did face a lot of production challenges. Uh, like most hardware companies, there was a lot of slowdowns, slowdowns, especially at the start of the pandemic. So while we weren't really sure what our, operations, what our operations would look like, we did focus a lot on what we could accomplish. So we did, uh, develop a new virtual curriculum to be able to deliver climate education to 350 students across North America. On top of that, we did really spend a lot of time to expand our internal processes as well as our after sales support. So we did overcome this hurdle by focusing our efforts on what we could accomplish during the pandemic. And we have seen actually that the our production has now returned to more no normal levels. So we have returned to our regular day-to-day -day operations. What accomplishment from the last year are you most proud of? It's a really great question. It's hard to pick just one. Um, I think the thing that we're the most proud of this year is definitely selling our third system and preparing it for delivery to Malone, New York. Uh, so the system will be going out in just a couple weeks here. Uh, the system will be delivered to this middle school where about 500 students will be using it for climate education as well as to divert plastic within their school. Uh, on top of that kind of system going out, we did uh, develop our curriculum to be tied in with that machine specifically. So when they do receive it, they'll have really every single tool that they need to create the most impact possible, all while creating positive environmental impact through recycling plastics. Looking at the triple bottom line, people, planet, and prosperity, is there one of those where your team could have done better? It's a really great question. I think with the, our focus with Poly especially is on the, the planet. Uh, I think our team is always looking for ways to expand our impact and create impact in new ways. Uh, this year we did look to start creating a new third machine, so our extruder, uh, which will allow us to just divert more plastic by turning it into new types of products. Uh, we can pelletize it then to use that plastic in different types of molding. Um, so I would say our team could have done better by um, creating these impact streams uh, more, more sooner, uh, but we are on track there and we are ready to uh, impact the planet more positively uh, for uh, many years to come. Was there any unexpected negative impact or externality related to your projects? For sure, so that's something we considered heavily while designing Poly. So our machines themselves do emit a little bit of CO2 when they are used and you are creating new products. However, however it is very minimal. Uh, so when you compare it to creating a product out of plastic in the traditional manners, our machines do, do use about 99% less oil, about 83% less CO2, and about 97% less water than if that product was made in a traditional manner. So while there is some uh, outputs, some negative outputs from using the poly system, it is a very large net positive to using the system. Um, and all of these impacts and all of these uh, externalities have been incorporated into our impact measuring process as well. How does your team define success? That's a great question. So in the short term, we have two main goals that help us define success. The first is to have seven systems operational by the end of next year, with two systems currently operational and one ready to ship within the next month. We're confident that our current processes will allow us to have four more systems sold for a total of seven systems. And then our second goal is to have the education program expanded to 15 new schools. 
In the long term, we're planning to bring polysystems to 10 northern communities to fill the recycling gap between remote communities and recycling infrastructure. And then we plan to accomplish this by partnering with a multinational company to sponsor these systems to communities in need across Canada and up north as well. And then of course, success to us is seeing our operators succeed and meet their goals as well, as well as reach their full potential. And then we plan to continue doing this by finding more ways to continue to support them and ensure their success with the poly machines. What do you expect your projects to look like a year from now? A year from now uh, with Poly, we do plan to continue to operate Poly within our team. Um, as Farah did just mention, we are expecting to have seven systems operational by that point. Um, so that would be the, the two systems currently operational, the one with Malone, um, and then the four uh, systems that we do have uh, at various stages within the pipeline. Uh, so in a year from now, we're hoping to have more, more molds created. We're hoping to have our extruder ready. Um, so we can introduce that into our uh, poly system uh, and really just kind of continue our growth and continue to provide support to these operators uh, that will be receiving their systems. How did you manage to meet and plan for your projects as a team despite COVID-19 restrictions? So our team in the past has used a lot of virtual communication tools such as Slack and Google Drive to manage our projects. Um, so we did rely heavily on those throughout the, throughout the year. Uh, we did also introduce different project management softwares, including Trello and Monday.com, which allowed us to really manage our, our tasks that were happening. Um, and that actually was a great, a great addition to our team that we'll be carrying forward into the future, even once COVID has completely finished. Um, I think then too, to kind of keep our team engaged, we did do monthly uh, full team meetings where everyone kind of came in. We talked about all of our projects and found ways to kind of keep each other um, engaged and having fun. Have you engaged any subject matter experts in the development of your projects? Yes, several. So our team relied on experts across a wide variety of industries to develop our project. In the research and development stages, we worked with these uh, with waste management experts, as well as a variety of business owners and machining specialists to understand both the need we are facing and uh, what solution we would need in order to tackle that need. Um, and then we also worked with several different environmental consultants to ensure that we were creating maximum impact. When designing and developing our machines, uh, our internal team of engineers worked alongside a professional a prototyping lab in Ottawa called Made Mill, as well as Carleton University Machine Shop and a mechanical engineering firm called CA Elliott to develop our end product. And then we had our own Enactus engineering students work closely with these partners for both knowledge transfer purposes, as well as to allow them to have that personal experience as well. Um, and then to this day, we, are, we work closely with these partners to ensure that we are creating a solution that creates maximum impact. Additionally, from the business perspective, we worked with many different uh, incubator and startup programs, as well as subject matter experts in this area, to develop and improve our business model and develop entrepreneurial training, which we then can transfer to our operators. What existing resources has your team leveraged throughout the development of your projects? For sure. So a lot of the resources that we have leveraged um, are kind of the partnerships that Farah had just uh, mentioned. So we did work a lot very closely with the experts um, that we uh, that Farah had mentioned. Uh, we also did use existing resources to create the first design of our machines. So the original designs were open source and we then made a lot of modifications on them. Uh, we actually went through about three different product iterations. Your to time end up has now expired. Thank you, Enactus University of Ottawa.